あの子は今日も部屋から一歩も出てきません相変わらず空想の友達の話をしています私がそんな子はいないのよって説明すると見たこともないような恐ろしい競争であの子のあんな顔見たこともない<笑>先生明るくて元気でお母さん朗らかだったあの子はどこへ行ったのでしょう<笑> Well this is interesting This is uh, uh, like this has just happened as soon as I started it up. So yeah. Naomi. Naomi, もう寝ちゃった。お母さんだよ。開けるよ。Oh. Oh, that can't be good. Yeah, this is disturbing. I think this is after, like, the, the true ending of the first game. I mean, she did kind of, you know, murder her best friend, so. Well, that's not gonna help! Going to be good. Oh, 
Oh, shit! I know it's a bit of a late introduction, but greetings, my beautiful viewers! I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Oh, boy. Like, I've been waiting for this. Like, I've been excited because, like, I know that this is, like, you know... Like, it's literally... I was looking at some advertisements for it, and, like, it's literally advertised as, like, a sequel, prequel, midquel, like, all in one. And so I am super, super excited for it. Oh. Oh, wow! Okay, so I guess we're starting with Seal, then. Okay. And I know this, this game does play very different from the original. Ah, uh, what lovely weather. I wonder how Ayumi's faring at school today. I hope she's enjoying herself. The spirits seem unusually active again, though. And there's that old sense of unease, too. The same one Ayumi and I have been feeling all our lives, but stronger than ever. I don't like it one bit. I can sense its presence. It's gotten very, very close. But that's preposterous, right? I'm probably just imagining things. Uh, probably not, Hinoe. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, Shinozaki's older sister. Maybe it would be best if I talked with her about it. I only hope nothing bad happens. Book of Shadows, Episode 1, Seal. Okay. No idea how long each chapter is going to be. <laughs> Flop. Mm -hmm. Threw it on my bag and collapsed onto the bed and stared up at the ceiling. These were my familiars. The familiar lighting, the familiar patterns I knew so well, and the familiar stain in the corner. I remember when my dad made that stain. It was my fifth birthday, and he just opened up a can of soda I had been shaking. Staring at the ceiling was something I'd done a million times before, but today it felt strange, like I'd just come from doing the exact same thing. And I'm not talking about the general act of lying in the bed and looking up, but a more specific sense that I'd experienced this singular moment in time once before. Oh boy. I believe the term you're looking for is deja vu. Supposedly, deja vu signifies that a new destiny has just been born within you. So, congratulations, Nakashima. You may be a whole new person now. <laughs> this is really interesting to see this visual novel style. So sad. So said the class rep, making the light of the situation and <laughs> making light of the situation in her usual creepy way. But maybe she was right. I have been more cognizant of my actions since then. Usually if I pay too much attention to every little thing I do, I begin obsessing. Then I just give myself a headache and end up calling it quits. But this deja vu was real. It was far stronger than it had any right to be. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill spooky feeling. It was all-encompassing. Oh, I know that's going to change, but oh, I feel happy at the moment. Hmm, no matter where you go in this house, it all smells just like you, Naomi. Is, is this heaven? <laughs> I swear, Seiko. Doesn't it feel like this has all happened once before? Okay, so that's what that button does. I was just checking what some of the buttons do. Okay. What has? You sleeping over here. And then the next day we were both like, Hey, let's go clothes shopping. Don't you remember? <laughs> Surely you jest. Long have I sought to capture thee and infiltrate the walls of this holy temple. But today marks my first successful conquest. Oh my god! 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 
mind! Those are Roblox on her neck! Those are Roblox on her neck! Oh my god! Why game? Why can't you give me any happiness? <coughs> oh god, it hurts already! Mm -hmm, yeah, I guess that isn't the sort of thing I'd half forget quite so easily. <sighs> Maybe just it must just be my imagination. Yeah, finally! Our flag has been planted! Seiko and Naomi, together at last! I shipped them so hard, but she's... No, why, game? You bet. This is gonna be lots of fun. Hmm? But what's all this about a flag? Oh, I think you know. <laughs> and so began my first ever slumber party with Seiko. I'm guessing that that never actually happened because you can clearly see the rope marks on her neck, so I am really concerned. The moment fifth period ended that day, we tore right out of the school and loaded up all the junk food and drinks we could carry. Seiko and I have been friends forever, but neither of us had stayed at each other's house before, so we were pretty excited. This was going to be fun. Game, game, why? God, I can't, I can't take my eyes off it. I can't take my eyes off the rope marks on her neck. Oh my God. And if I can't, you guys don't get to either. Oh my fucking God. Uh, Naomi, do you mind if I make a quick call home? Uh, the kids know where I'll be, but I should still check in since I didn't have a chance to swing by. Sure, go ahead. Do you need to use the landline? No, 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 my cell will be just fine. I just worry about poor little you, you know? <laughs> He'd be sad if I didn't at least call. No problem. You do your thing. I'll take a quick bathroom break. <laughs> I exited my room, glancing behind me to see Seiko holding her cell phone uh, to her head with one hand while flashing me a peace sign with the other. The mere idea that there'd be a friend waiting for me in my room when I got back was just so... Exciting. Oh, the things we could talk about that night. Where should we start? What stories should we tell? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Looks like Dad's going to be late coming home tomorrow, you. So I'll head your way after the festival cleanup and all the goodbyes. Then we can get ready for Dad's special surprise together, okay? Mm-hmm. Give all my love to the others. Make sure you all tuck in tight tonight so you don't catch colds. Take care, you. Huh. They holding up okay? Sure are. Which means I've got nothing to worry about. I can enjoy my time with you to the fullest. I wonder if this is like a dream. Either Seiko's or Naomi's. Because I don't think that this happened in the first game. Sounds like you're ready to have some fun. And I'll bet you are too. <laughs> oh! The road marks still bother me though. So what should we talk about? Anything you'd like. I'm just glad to have this blissful opportunity. <laughs> I really can't say why I felt so shy and embarrassed. The two of us were always together, after all. Changing the setting from school to my personal space just seemed to bring us a lot closer. I wonder if maybe, you know, it's it's obvious that, you know, like, you know, Seiko was in love with her. I wonder if Naomi was um, bisexual and, like, had, like, kind of, like, repressed feelings because of, you know, Japanese society and everything. I found myself staring at Seiko's face as if studying it. Did she always look like that? This was someone who regarded me as a friend. All kinds of inane thoughts were swimming through my head. For some reason, they were making me really nervous. Yeah, the row marks on her neck uh, have me very, very concerned. Hey, you know what we've got? We've got that chocolate soda we bought. Want to try it out? Do I? Just try and stop me. 
I took out the bottle we'd purchased and poured its fizzy contents into two cups. Had the faintest tinge of chocolate color, but was otherwise clear. As I hit the bottom of each cup, that familiar, comforting sizzle of carbonic acid rising from a liquid echoed forth amidst the froth of bubbles. No one talks like that! No teenager talks like that! Well, it sure is a pretty color, but what do we do with the rest of it if it sucks? I'll take it with us into school tomorrow and offer it to everyone. Make like we're being real nice, see? Oh, God damn it! Why is Seiko so pretty? Hey, that's a good idea. All right, here you go, Seiko. Thanks. Okay, let's drink this down on the count of three. Sounds good. One, two, three. Damn, that's good. Before I knew it, we were up to our old tricks, talking on and on like we always did at school. We smiled and laughed and felt joy at all the same things, spending this time together. We could each forget all our troubles for a while. This was the kind of friend that comes along only once in a lifetime. I was starting to get real sentimental, and I had no idea why. Certainly couldn't admit it to her, though. <laughs> or I'd never hear the end of it. Oh, I just kept thinking to myself, I really hope Seiko and I can be friends uh, like this clean into adulthood. For the rest of our lives, even. Why does game have to make me sad? Why does game have to make me sad? Why, game? Why? Maybe it was the same weird sense of camaraderie one tends to feel during overnight field trips. I don't know. Mm. 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 Miss Nakashima, this food is stupendous! Come on, Naomi. Say, ah. Uh, um, ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. You two certainly are close, aren't you? <laughs> I've heard so much about you, Shinohara, that I felt I simply had to meet you one of these days. Oh. Oh, Naomi's been talking about me, has she? Oh, all the time. During meals, you're always a hot topic around here. She never fails to have some story about where you two went or what you did. Oh, so I've been accepted by the family then? My tears of joy overflow at the prospect. I must be red as a beet right now. Seiko? Oh, and it's not just you. Yomi also loves talking about that Satoshi Mochita boy. Whenever he comes up, she gets all excited. I think she likes... Mom, it's on the Atoshi side. Sorry, dear. Oh, don't worry. I know all about her feelings toward her beloved Mochita. Naomi may seem like a strong girl, but she's really quite the shy one. Seiko, stop. Just stop. Well, you're certainly well informed. What say you and I have a girl's night out sometime? I'll treat you to something good, and in return, you tell me everything you know about Naomi from school. It would be an honor and a privilege, Miss Nakashima. Hey, come on now. <laughs> well then, have you two gotten sufficiently stuffed? I've drawn a bath, so you should head in while the water's still warm. I assume you'll be okay going in together since you're both girls, no? Damn straight! This flag is firmly planted now. This is... <laughs> the day is totally won! <laughs> God damn it. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like, I, I, am I crazy? Or is it that, like, women can, like, you know, go into, like, the same, like, you know, bathhouse and, like, be naked around each other, no problem. But, like, men were like, no, no, we can't. We couldn't possibly. No. What if I see another p p p penis? <laughs> it's just... It's just so funny that, like, in these situations, men are more sensitive. It's really weird, honestly. 
<laughs> well, I should say some men are, but not all men. Huh? What are you talking about? Are we really going to bathe together? And seriously, what's all this flag business about? Ah! Never mind that, just come on. Miss Nakashima, we're gonna borrow your bathroom. Roger that. Make sure you two get nice and warm. Wonder if her mother would, like... I honestly wonder if her mother would approve of their relationship if they decided to pursue it. Like, I would hope so, but, you know. Japan. Seiko and I removed the lapels from our school uniforms on the way to the bathroom dressing area. I still felt a little uncomfortable, so I suggested we bathe separately after all. But Seiko just mumbled that resistance is futile and started taking off my clothes. With only a few swift movements, she had my whole outer uniform stripped away in no time at all. Seiko works fast. She was a bona fide pro, a real expert at taking people's clothes off. Disturbingly well practiced! <laughs> hot, hot, hot! Ooh, no kidding. Water at your house doesn't mess around. Yeah, Mom likes to run the world's hottest baths. Keep telling her that when you're soaking, lower temperatures are better, but she never listens. I mean, like, I am also the type of person who, like, when I get into the bath, I'm like, listen, I need this to be, like, like... Not like scalding hot or anything, but it's got to be pretty damn warm, you know? Oh, well. Huh. What's this? Is your body feeling chilled? Well, then, take this. <laughs> you're going to catch a cold if you're not careful. you got to be quicker at taking your clothes off, Naomi. Come on, don't be shy. Here, look this way. Seiko had such a dumb, self-satisfied expression on her face as she scooped up water in a basin and dumped it over our heads. I think you're unshy enough for the both of us. I mean, you're the one who tore off all my clothes like they were paper. Anyone else getting a little, like, you know, like, you know, hot under the collar? No? No? Just me? Okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Well, I do bathe my little brothers every day, so... I've gotten pretty good at speed stripping other people. That makes sense. Uh, okay. Well, that makes sense, actually. Anyway, you need to loosen up. Let's take this opportunity to deepen our friendship. Oh, really now? Yes, yes, you've thoroughly broken me out of my shell. Now, how about I wash your back? Have a seat. Oh, yes, please. How did I know? How did I know this was going to happen? Thank God we have censorship bubbles! I lathered up a brand new silk towel with body soap and began washing Seiko's back, marveling at her perfect complexion. I never noticed before what a classic beauty she was. I bought this special just for you, so I hope you're enjoying it. How's it feel? Yeah, that's it. Right there. And that's when all language broke down and the sounds emanating from the bathroom became... <laughs> be began resembling strange animalistic cries rather than human speech. How are we not surprised? Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Cut it out. You sound demented. Just a little farther up, please. Here? Yeah, right there. Uh. God damn it, what am I doing? I'm doing, God, this is, like, it's funny because, like, I'm, I'm getting so into it that I'm not realizing it until, like, I take a step back and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, I guess. I made you itchy, I'll bet. All right, hold still. Didn't take long for Seiko's back to become completely enveloped in soap suds but I could still detect a reaction to my every touch. And the rope marks are still there. And they're still there. This whole scene is ruined now. Mm. Mm. Huh? Don't tell me you're ticklish. Heh, guess the secret's out. I'm really, really ticklish. Well, in that case, it's a thorough washing you shall get. 
You're so on the offensive today, are you? Wait, stop! <laughs> what was that? I couldn't hear you over the sound of my furious finger work. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was on for sure, and nothing was going to stop me from giving Seiko's back the full treatment. Oh. After all, home today uh, was spent setting up for the culture festival, so we both got pretty dusty. Nice scrubbing is exactly what we both needed. <laughs> Stop squirming! Hold still! <sighs> Man, Seiko, you're really slender. Your shoulder blades are incredible, like a cat's. Are they? Hmm. I can't really see them, so I wouldn't know. But for you, it's all about that sexy, sexy collarbone. <laughs> oh my god, Seiko, why? Oh my god. D stop! Stop making me happy! I know it's gonna be all the worse! What? You sound like an old fogey or something. But so beautiful and so big. Yes, her collarbone. Absolutely, that's that's all that we're talking about here. I uh, don't think that's my collarbone you're staring at. As I gazed at Seiko, staring at my chest with hungry eyes, I suddenly had another flash of deja vu, an uncomfortable one. My eyes drifted to her neck. <gasps> no, she's noticing! There was some sort of mark there, a bruise uh, that wrapped all the way around. Seiko? What happened to your neck? Did you scratch yourself or something? Hmm? Something there? It's pretty faint, but there's a red mark. Oh no! Oh no! It's gonna break the immersion! Hmm. Don't remember injuring myself or anything. Bruise on her neck, though slight, looked less spotty than you'd expect if it were made by human hands. It seemed more even, like it came from a cloth. Probably a result of wearing her kimono cord tight around her neck all day for the red bean stoop stand. Uh, what a shame to see her pure white skin so damaged. Hope it heals soon, whatever it is. Oh, no. No! No! Naomi? I can't hold back any longer. Huh? What now? Hmm? I just gotta grab that ass! Oh my god! That ass. Good. <laughs> Chase on! Seiko, seriously, cool down, girl! <sighs> I think you've gone totally mental on me! I just can't help myself! You know, we do have a spare futon. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm fine right here where I am. Why is everything in this game making me so sad? It's just, there is no happiness. There is only sadness. Because I know what happens, and I don't like it! Is this how everyone else feels when they play this game? This game makes me sad! Two people sharing a single bed would make for a warm night, but if either of us rolled over, the other was going to wind up clean on the floor. I offered the bed to her and was perfectly willing to spend the night on a rollout futon, but she wouldn't have it. Well, as long as you don't feel too crowded, I guess this is fine. Uh-huh. It's all warm and cozy. I love it. If only I could kiss you like this, I'd die a happy woman. With that, she puckered her lips, a shape resembling a three, and looked at me expectantly. What gotten? What have gotten into her? No, we better not. Happy woman or no, I'd hate to see you die. <sighs> Damn. Hoisted. <laughs> hmm? I was just thinking, this is really fun. Heh. <laughs> I was around that point when I started to realize the truth about Seiko. After all, if an outsider were to witness her blatant act of harassment and my 
complete dismissal of it, they'd assume we were more than friends, too. Yeah. But it's not like I was actually in love with her. I really didn't feel that way at all. Yeah, but she did. And maybe... Like I said, it's quite possible that, like, a part of her maybe did. But, like, for example, if she had never met Satoshi, maybe. But, you know. I just thought of her as a very dear friend. And figured this closest what we had was pretty normal. It seemed natural, in fact, that our behavior would lead to a third party uh, misunderstanding every now and again. But I just have to set the record straight. Woofed. Uh, see, this is the straight washing that, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, Japanese games did for the longest time, you know, because here's the thing is like, it's fine if Naomi is completely straight and everything like that, but I don't know. I, I get the feeling from their reactions that one, she knows how her friend feels and doesn't, she doesn't act on it, but like, she doesn't encourage it either. And I mean, like, that must mean that in uh, somewhere she's okay with it. And the idea of her friend being in love with her doesn't bother her. And, like, that's a good thing. But at the same time, I mean, like, the fact that they felt the need to explain this, it feels awkward, you know? Like... They could have easily just not said anything, and we would have already assumed that because of what they've talked about with Satoshi and everything, that we would understand that already. But, you know, they felt the need to go out of their way to do this, and I don't know, it, it feels kind of forced, in my opinion. But honestly, even with situations like that arose, they were still pretty fun in their own strange, silly sort of way. You know, this is the first time I've ever had a friend over. <laughs> This is my first sleepover, too. Sure beats lying in bed alone. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Ow. You okay? Might have slapped you a little too hard back there. You sure did put your back into it, slugger. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll be just fine. Seiko was rubbing her face slightly where I struck her, <laughs> but smiling from cheek to cheek. Ah, uh, right when, uh, when Seiko would get perverted, you know, Naomi would, you know, give her a smack. Sorry again. How about I come over at your place next time? What do you say? Ooh, I say yes, yes! That way I can introduce you to the little ones. You are absolutely welcome anytime. Thanks. The moonlight crept its way in through my bedroom window, giving the whole room a dreamlike glow. Soon enough, I was beginning to nod off. Where was I? Was I dreaming? No. It was just my room. I could feel Seiko's warmth next to me. Or maybe I was somewhere else entirely in this whole world. All of my life's experiences were just one big dream. Man, it's hard to form a coherent thought when you're dead tired. Ah, I, 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 I don't know. Why did you have to use that phrase? Well, tomorrow's a big day. Let's get some sleep. You said it. From a sleepover right into a culture festival. We're true challengers. <laughs> Don't you dare oversleep. If you do, I'm pulling back the blankets and putting an ice pack on your stomach. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm such an early riser, I put middle-aged women to shame. I'll hold you to that. Anyway, good night, Seiko. Good night. Wow, that was quick. Seiko must have been exhausted. I could hear her calm, telltale grunts and rhythmic breathing, uh, signifying that she was out cold, and it was contagious. I couldn't get over just how much warmth her body was generating. The previous night was so cold. But this was perfect. Like she was a hot water bottle. Mm, so warm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you're awake? I can hear your voice even from the deepest sleep, Naomi. You've experienced that during class, remember? 
Is that some kind of ESP or something? Wait, were you sleeping during class? That's not good. Hey, I have a question. Hmm? In the future, even after you get married, will you still spend time with me like this? What? Of course I will. Talk about a bolt from the blue. For true? For true. For, for true. That's an odd sentence. <laughs> it's not even a sentence. Well, technically it is, actually. Two words can still be a sentence. I mean, we're friends, you know. Through thick and thin. And we always will be. <laughs> Thanks. Man, you really a spaz sometimes, you know that? Seiko yanked the covers up over her head like some girly anime heroine. If she really did think of me as more than a friend, how was I supposed to react? Naomi? Hmm? Let's always be together. <laughs> you bet. Good night, Seiko. Good night! Seiko and I seemed to be thinking the same thing. We were both so happy. But there was another side to the coin. There was a certain awkwardness as well. It was a strange sensation. See, this is what makes me think that possibly, um, Naomi, like, yeah, I mean, like, I, like, what, they're like 16 years old, so, I mean, like, I'm sorry, but, like, very few human beings know who they are at 16. They're just starting to, like, realize who they are. And, I mean, like, you know, a lot of my friends, like, you know, quote-unquote, had their gay awakening or bisexual awakening, like, you know, around that time. Oopsie, I pushed the wrong button. But either way... Kind of the best way to put it is that, like, I had a family, uh, a, a very good family friend of mine, my friend's grandmother, who I called my adopted grandmother. She once asked me, you know, what would you do if someday you just woke up and all of a sudden you were gay? Like, all of a sudden, like, you woke up and you just realized, yeah, I like the same, I like, you know, like the same, you know, I like the same sex or same gender or whatever, what have you, you know? And I didn't really have an answer. But, like, I like to think that, you know... We all just kind of like, we, it would be difficult to accept and everything, but like, as my friends have told me many, many times, there's like a, there's like levels of, of like, you know, a homosexual and like heterosexuality and everything. And like, you know, like, of course, like bisexual is like, if you think bisexual is the middle, far to the right is a homosexual, far to the left is heterosexual. Most people kind of fall in there somewhere, but I mean, like, you know, it takes a while to figure it out. It's not like it just comes to you right away, so. Sorry, this game is bringing out my, my inner, like, you know, commentary. Sorry. Soon enough, Seiko began moaning and breathing heavily for real. She had fallen fast asleep, facing me, curled into a fetal position. As I lay there staring at her head, my hand moved of its own volition and began gently stroking her hair. Mm -hmm. Strangely, it didn't feel awkward or embarrassing at all. Perhaps because I knew she was asleep, it just felt natural. I slid my hand toward her back and continued to rub her head gently like a mother would her child. Hmm. What a lovely shape her head was. Perfectly round. I just kept stroking her hair, thinking about this and that. Suddenly she clung to me and buried her face in my chest. Hmm? Was she still half awake? <laughs> what a strange scene this was. But just for tonight, I was willing to let it slide. There, there. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, why is everything sad? It's supposed to rain all evening, so make sure you both take an umbrella with you. Got it. Ah, thanks for the loner. Have fun today, and Shinohara, be sure to think about where you go on that date of yours. Yes, mother. <laughs> uh, she's not your mother, you know. So good, woken up ungodly early and pulled my futon away. 
forcing me up with a chill and a sneeze. We both combed our hair and put on our school uniforms, then scarfed down breakfast my mom had made and flew out of the house. If we didn't hurry, we'd be late for setting up. Oh, things are pretty grand this year, too. Yeah, it's really coming together. Ah, oh, but I forgot. I have to go get the bowls from the prep room. Seiko, you go ahead to class, will you? Roger that. Oh, and I'll take your bag for you. Give it here. Thanks. It was the day of the culture festival, or Kisaragi Fest. Ha! <laughs> Our school has a whole lot of history to it, and this festival has been part of it for ages. Every student in the junior and senior high alike was busy getting ready for uh, the festivities, which were due to start in about 30 minutes. I was wondering if I had any extra time afterwards to go check on the other class's projects. We previously washed the bowls we were planning to use and laid them out in the home ec prep room. With those bowls in hand, I proceeded to class 2-9. I climbed the usual staircase and headed toward the usual room, stepping carefully so I wouldn't drop any dishes. The plan this year was to host a red bean soup restaurant. I could smell the sweet red bean paste more and more clearly with every step I took. I'd eaten so much food at breakfast, and here we were about, and here we had even more food rearing its head. When it came to sweets, I say, bring it on. Oh! Traditional sweets. Morning, everyone. Looks like uh, there'll be enough bowls for today. What do you think? Good morning! Ah, morning. Yeah, looks like it'll be plenty. Hey. Morning, Kishinuma. Morning, Satoshi. Uh, Naomi. Hmm? Satoshi seemed a bit out of sorts. He was just staring blankly. Was he still half asleep? Oh no! This is from... Oh no! This is from when time went backwards! Oh no! He knows what's gonna happen! Fuck! It bothered me to see him like that. But I literally had my hands full, so I really couldn't dwell on it. I pushed on into the classroom. But I couldn't actually see what was in front of my feet, and I have to admit it was kind of scary. Be real challenge not to drop anything. Mm, Naomi, good morning, my dear. Seiko, stop grabbing my ass! Haven't we already said our good mornings anyway? Oh, but how can I resist an opportunity like this? Naomi, hands restricted, unable to fend off my advances. Ah, 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 ah! Look what you did! Oh, uh, Now that's no good. Our tableware has to be kept clean. Guess we'll just have to wash all again. Here, I'll help. Thanks, sorry for the trouble. Oh, wow! Well, this is adorable. Look at them! Look at all of them! Oh! Back when happiness was a thing! And so began the cultural festival. All day we wore the clothes Suzumoto prepared for us and served red bean soup to our classmates. She had a lot of uh, costuming experience, having worked on that side of things in the drama club for quite some time. She even did the sewing herself, putting all her practice to the test, and the kimonos she prepared for us were really all of exceptional quality. So good, in fact, they became a centerpiece for us, bringing in students from the junior and senior high divisions alike. It made us, uh, it made for a busy day. When we weren't tending to customers, we were chasing after that slacker, Kishinuma, <laughs> or taking time to check out some of the other classes' projects. In the end, not only did we have a really fun day, we also wound up being the most popular classroom in the whole festival. All in all, a rousing success! Finally, the clock struck six. As our busy day drew to a close, we all stood around talking. 
He kept saying we should clean up, but that kinda didn't happen. Before I knew it, there were only seven of us left in the room. Satoshi, the class rep, Seiko, Morishige, Kishinuma, Suzumoto, and myself. It seemed everyone else had already gone home. Our homeroom uh, TA, Miss Shishido, showed up with Satoshi's little sister in tow, but they were it. We nine became the de facto cleanup crew. Oh no. Oh no! Ah, uh, finally done. Good work, everyone. The place is looking like a real classroom again. Those dumbasses who went home without helping are sure gonna get a piece of my mind tomorrow, though. <sighs> Not much of a class rep if I can't even hold everyone together long enough to clean up after ourselves. Although you did manage to keep Kishinuma here, surprisingly. Oh, shut up. Yeah, but that's because he likes her. Ha <laughs> ha! Suzumoto, I just wanted to say, it's been really fun having you here these last few months. I can't tell you how many times your positive energy helped bolster my spirits. Always remember that you're loved and respected. We may not have said much to that effect, but we've all been watching you blossom here. I lent a hand where I could and did my best to help guide you, but ultimately you walked your own path and become a fine young woman. Miss Yui. It takes a special person to achieve what you've done without even realizing it. It's been an honor to serve as your TA. I wish you all the best at your new school. Thank you. Unfortunately, this teary farewell brought us all back to reality. During the holidays following the culture festival, Suzumoto was being transferred. This was to be her last day at Kisaragi Academy High School. Everyone here loved her, so it was a sad occasion indeed. She, she was truly a kind person, possessing no ulterior motives and harboring no ill will toward anyone. The thought of her leaving us was just plain depressing. Time waits for no one, and sadly, the time had come to say our goodbyes. As one final hurrah, our occult-obsessed class rep asked us to perform some friendship ritual called Sachiko Ever After. No! Why? Upon mentioning it, she produced a paper doll from her bag. Looked a lot like those proxy dolls you'll see in Shinto shrines, uh, designed to absorb bad karma in someone's place. Visually, this whole thing just seemed like the setup for a cursed seance or something. But it was kind of scary, but I wasn't the only one who thought so. <laughs> this is, well, it's a charm that I found on the internet. If we do it right, then all of us will be together forever. Or we'll always be friends anyway. That's the gist of it. Interesting. So, how does it work? No! Don't do this! God damn it, Satoshi! Seriously! Don't do this! It's dangerous! Our lives are on the line! God! Satoshi? <laughs> Don't you think that's going a bit overboard? Hmm? <laughs> Look, I'm not joking. I'm dead serious here. Sasha had always been easily spooked, and in true form he was pleading for his life that we stop what we were doing. It didn't sound that scary, though. Oh, no. He's... I mean, God, I mean, like, if I was in that situation, I would literally be like, nope, grab the doll. Like, fucking, like, if I'd eat it if I had to. Don't worry, Mochita. This isn't my usual creepy fare. I gotta say, it's rare to see you this worked up.
In the end, eight of us proceeded with the ritual as planned, while Sashashi sat off to the side, tears in his eyes. I kind of felt bad for him. Oh, no! This was for Suzumoto. We all wanted to give her the best possible send-off. So, all I could really do was silently wonder what had gotten into him. Please, I'm begging you, stop this! Don't go through with it! Why won't anyone listen to me?! He's really serious. Like, as serious as I've ever seen him. What is it, Satoshi? What is it that has you so worried? It's a time loop. This has happened before. All of this! I remember it. And what's coming next is worse than you can possibly imagine! <laughs> Sorry, but I'm through trying to convince you. Just be a good boy and wait for us to finish, okay? Time loop? Is he experiencing deja vu like me? Is some new destiny being born inside of him, like the class rep said before? Come to think of it, this does feel a little familiar. This room, this atmosphere, this charm. I obediently dug my nails into the paper doll, but all the while, I was frantically foraging through my memories trying to figure out what I was missing. Going to pull on it until it rips apart into nine pieces, okay? On the count of three! <sighs> With pallid face, Satoshi quickly rushed over and grabbed the paper doll himself. He was joining us after all, it seemed. I mean, like, uh, here's the thing, if you can't stop your friends from doing the dumb thing, the least you can do is go with them to try to help. Everyone else smiled at him as if to say, finally, you've come to your senses. But I was just starting to get a really bad feeling about this. No. No, there's definitely something wrong here. Ready? One. Two. Oh. Fuck! No! As soon as I reached the hallway, I fell to my knees with a thud. <coughs> no. No, no, no! What was that? A person? It was pitch black, but I swear it was shaped like a person! Oh, this is from when she was in the infirmary! School infirmary door hung open near me, and in my panic state, I swore I'd seen a black shadowy figure within it. Oh! No! <laughs> yep. She threw up. Oh, no. My mind had been completely overtaken with fear. What was that? What just happened? That dark, misty entity came toward me and entered my body from every orifice. It came in through my ears, through my mouth. I felt an enormous lump in my throat, blocking the flow of air into my lungs and momentarily teetering on the brink of unconsciousness. I was almost killed. <clears throat> it felt as if a cold hand reached into my body grabbed hold of my life's energy, turning all my internal organs inside out and leaving me for dead. My stomach was churning. My bowels were on fire and my legs were all twisted around themselves. Can pressure alone disturb the human body this much? The odor and flavor of my own gastric juice is still gnawing at the back of my throat. I felt like I was going to throw up again, but I held it in. I remember this. This place, these circumstances. I have been here before. I know I have. After performing the Sachigo Ever After ritual, there was a hellish noise, and a huge hole appeared in the floor, and then I was here in this school. There was no sign of Satoshi or Mishishido, or the class rep or anyone else. Only Seiko was still near me, collapsed in a heap on the floor. Seiko and I explored the decaying building as best we could, but there was no way out. Not a single window or outer door could be moved or even broken. Just as our last shreds of hope had begun to vanish, we suddenly heard Satoshi's little sister, Yuka, cry from somewhere just out of sight. 
I sprained my ankle pretty badly and couldn't walk very well, so Seiko went off alone to find her while I rested up in the infirmary. Oh boy! That was when the dark, shadowy figure showed up and began attacking. I was scared. I was scared. So, so scared, so scared, so scared, so very scared. My teeth were chattering and my lips were quivering as if they had a mind of their own. Oh my god, poor thing. Why would she leave me alone like that? I told her I'd go with her to look for Yuka, so why? Why did she leave me behind? Was I going to slow her down? Was I going to get in her way? Naomi, what happened? Are you okay? Seiko. What? Oh my god, are you alright? I'm so sorry I left you by yourself. Just seeing Seiko's face quelled my shivers. Whenever she was around, I felt so at ease. At that moment, I just wanted to cling on to her and cry my eyes out. Oh my god. Darkening 5%? What? I don't know what that is, but uh, sadly, um, we are at time for this episode. <sighs> boy. Oh my god. Oh boy. Well, um, yeah, this definitely went to territory I was not expecting. But, like, everything we've seen up until now is what's already happened. But the mark on Seiko's neck proves that time looped and that that's what that's from. So, I don't know. Like, maybe things will go differently. I'm hoping that they do. But, I mean, like, you know, I know this is, like, an alternate reality and doesn't go off of the true ending of the first game. Because, you know, Seiko dies no matter what. But, maybe... <sighs> I know it's bad to have hope that maybe things won't turn out so bad in this timeline, but dear God, I don't know. But either way, thank you everybody so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here with me. Next time, we're, we're in the thick of it now. And just like with the original Corpse Party, it's just Naomi and Seiko at the end of the first episode. So hopefully things won't go so horrible this time. So, thanks again, and, as always, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe if you're not already, ring that bell for all the notifications is, and until next time, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers.